So we spent a couple of videos now on some problems that you can solve exactly in quantum mechanics. The infinite square well and the harmonic oscillator. There's a couple of other problems out there that you probably have in your quantum mechanics textbook that can be solved exactly. But the vast majority of problems in quantum mechanics, meaning the vast majority of potential energy functions, leave you with a Schrodinger equation that you cannot solve analytically. This was a major moment for me in grad school when I realized that there were only a certain number of problems that could actually be solved in quantum mechanics and that the rest of the problems, the infinite number of problems out there, requires us to use approximation techniques. They require us to sort of make estimates of, of lower bounds of the ground state of the energy. And they require us to use computer code, which is why I'm so excited to get to host this channel and the series in particular about studying these unsolvable problems. But I do want to let that hang for a second because that is a weird thing. Like that seems like it shouldn't be that way, right? Because you always think of physicists as having the answer. And it turns out there's some problems, there are many problems, where you can't get the answer, right? And so we have to turn to these numerical techniques. Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's suppose you started with an infinite square well, right? We know how to solve that. The eigenstates are sines and cosines. And let's suppose somebody came along and put a bump in the middle of here, maybe circular, maybe parabolic, who knows? Somebody just comes in and adds a bump in there. Well, unless this happens to line up with some other problem, like the, like the harmonic oscillator, um, we can't really solve this, right? If I just put a random uh, sort of bump in the potential there, I can't really solve that one. Um, similarly, let's suppose you took your harmonic oscillator and you made it stronger. Let's suppose instead of x squared, you had a v of x to the fourth. Right? It's just one degree or two degrees higher towards the polynomial. It has to be even. We're not going to worry about x cubed because then your, uh, then your electrons would roll away. Um, this v equals x to the fourth, it's just a sharper version of a parabola, right? Well, we can't solve that one. We don't have an analytical solution to that. So what do you do? What do you do with these problems that you don't have an analytical solution to? Well, what I want us to look at uh, as options in this video is three different options. This is not the only approaches. Um, you probably have a quantum mechanics two course. If you're in my quantum mechanics one, you definitely have a quantum mechanics two course. That'll look at a lot of other options, a lot of different ways. You can take a, a problem you know the answer to and kind of perturb it into a problem you don't have the answer to. Um, there's different ways you can estimate the energy eigenstates. There's different ways that you can uh, approximate the, the, the eigenstate. But what I would just want to highlight in this video are three uh, ways you can start at the very least. The first thing you can do is you can start with eigenstates of a similar problem. So for example, for this uh, infinite square well with a bump, you can start with the infinite square well sine and cosines. You can start with those, time evolve it, and see what happens, right? See what influence this has in terms of you know, messing things up. It should behave decently on this side and behave decently on this side. And then in the middle, that's kind of the, that's the question mark. That's the thing you might be interested in. So what you might do is start with this thing being narrow and short and then eventually make it broader and taller. So we'll give that a try. Similarly for this one, you might start with the eigenstates of the harmonic oscillator, right? So those Gaussian times uh, the uh, Hermite polynomials. And again, you'll see them, you're still going to see them bounce back and forth, right? Because it has to, you know that that's intuitively that's what has to happen. But what happens to the wave function itself? You know, where does it break up and start to get extra bumps and wiggles and things like that? So that's one thing you can try. You can try eigenstates from a similar problem. Another thing you could do, you can try to find the eigenstates of the problem, right? Uh, you're not going to get an exact solution, but maybe you can take one of these eigenstates. Maybe I can take a sine and cosine here and do some sort of modification to this thing where maybe I make the amplitude a little bit lower in the middle here. And I just keep modifying that and refining that until I end up with a stationary state, right? I mean, it's kind of one of those things where you're guessing correcting, so good luck on that one. Um, there are more systematic ways of doing that using perturbation theory and things like that. Um, I might put that in a future video, so uh, hopefully we'll get to try that out together in the future. But I think the most important thing you can do, you can watch the expectation values of position and momentum evolve because ultimately that's the thing you're interested in 
in a problem or in an experiment is you've got a, a bunch of electrons in here and you're interested in watching how do those electrons end up over this thing, right? You might have a little bit of tunneling going on through here. Um, same thing over here, you're probably interested in, for example, the period and the amplitude of those oscillations, right? So if you watch your graph of expectation value versus time, right, we should see it oscillate. It won't be an exact sine and cosine like we have before. But the important thing is it should match the classical results, which we can also model using things like Euler Cromer, Runge Kata, etc. And so it should be able to match, right? So you should be able to study this thing, even if you don't know what the name of the function is or how it's going to behave or how the period and the amplitude are related in an exact closed form solution, you can at least watch it and study it and find interesting things going on. All right, so let's trade out our harmonic oscillator potential energy, something we know how to solve for x to the fourth. And let's try out an initial state of the ground state for the harmonic oscillator. So I've got my harmonic oscillator calculation here, my, uh, my normalization factor, my uh, exponential term, and then my Hermite polynomial. And we're just gonna try n equals zero here. So I put a one in the zero spot and the rest are gonna be zeros. And let's try this with a potential energy of x to the fourth. All right, so here is our n equals zero, right? It's a nice Gaussian here. And you can see that we have things not all as well here, right? Even though this is kind of the same shape, it's kind of a, a squatter um, parabola. It is, this is not an energy eigenstate for this problem. And so we've got the, the wave function kind of narrowing here, right? We've got these two interesting little peaks developing in psi imaginary. Psi real is kind of forming this almost kind of blockish lump here. And so the modulus is forming a peak here in the center, although we are starting to get those shoulders here developing. That's interesting. So now I've actually got three peaks developing. You, again, you don't see that happening with the harmonic oscillator because this would be a stationary state for the harmonic oscillator. This green envelope would remain the same. Now when I come down to the expectation value, there's not really a lot happening there because this scale, right, this is basically zero. This is kind of within the error of the code. Same thing with the momentum here. I don't really expect to see too much happening there since we are symmetric about the center. Basically what you're getting there is the error that's creeping in over on the left and right hand sides here. But I could try different combinations, right? So I could try instead of the ground state, I could try the n equals one state. Let's try that out. And again, you get the same kind of idea. Uh, it looks like it should be fitting, right? This is supposed to be a stationary state, but it's not. It's only a stationary state of x squared, not x to the fourth. And so we get some interesting time evolution happening here. So if I were doing a study of this potential energy, I would want to know what's happening to these peaks. Are they getting closer? Are they getting farther apart? I see that they're getting taller, which means that they must also get narrower. So that's interesting. Now these have all been symmetric across the center, so I expect it to say stay symmetric there. Let's try a linear combination of these two. Let's try a one over square root two for this and a one over square root two for this one. So we'll have a mixture of the zero state and the first state. So it's no longer symmetric. And so we've got things shifting around. Now I do expect to see my expectation value moving. Again, it's got to move like it does classically. And classically, I would still expect this to oscillate. It's not gonna be an exact sine or cosine but I do still expect it to oscillate, right? Because it can't get out of this well, however hard it tries, it can't get out of this well. I'm interested to see what happens to this dip here, because it is going up. I wonder if these two peaks are gonna merge. Oh, now I've got another peak developing in the middle here. That's interesting. Oh, now it's getting absorbed. That's interesting. See, this is the kind of interesting stuff that you can watch with these unsolved potentials. Let's try one more thing. Let's try our good friend, the coherent state. So let's try a coherent state. Let's try alpha of 0.5. So we're gonna put a coherent state inside this quartic potential. And we still have that little error building up on the left and the right side. We can adjust that, or we, we can uh, compensate for that by decreasing the time step here. Um, we can 
Also, maybe make this range a little bit wider. Maybe go from negative 7 to 7, something like that, just so it has more space for the wave function to die off. You can also, if you want, just force the wave function to be 0 at the edges, um, and then that'll cut down on some of those wiggles there. Uh, my coherent state is not staying coherent, so that's unfortunate. It's just maintaining one peak, though. I've got a little shoulder over here, uh, but it is pretty fun to watch. So anyway, that's some interesting uh, techniques you can use to study unsolvable potential energies. Um, in the future, we'll take a look at other techniques you can use, more advanced and formal stuff like perturbation theory, variational principles, stuff like that. But for right now, I think the simulation is a pretty good way to get an idea of what's going on in this quantum world. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.